In the late 19th century, Captain Robert Halpin and the crew of the Great Eastern laid the first transatlantic telegraph cables. We are here in Wicklow Town, less than an hour south of Dublin, the birthplace and final resting place of Captain Halpin. Locals have created a walking trail here to celebrate Wicklow's link to the maritime legend. Robert Charles Halpin was born in February 1836, behind me here in the Bridge Tavern in Wicklow. Um, he grew up listening to stories of the sea. He had two brothers who were already ship's captains. His formal schooling would have taken place uh, here on Leitrim Place. Um, didn't last very long because he was at sea before he was 12 years of age. His father died while he was away at sea in 1847. And while he was away at sea again in 1849, his mother passed away. So he had lost both parents before he was 14 years of age. By the time he was 21, he became a ship's captain and he was given a new steamship called the Circassian. He brought armies around the world, he brought cargo around the world. But the reason that Halpin is so famous really is because of his involvement with Brunel's great ship, the Great Eastern. In 1865, Robert Charles Halpin became the first mate on the Great Eastern. It had been transformed from a passenger ship to a cable laying ship. It was the only ship in the world large enough to carry the huge spools of cable necessary to across the Atlantic Ocean. He retired at the age of 40 as a ship's captain. He had already married a lady called Jessie Moan, a Newfoundlander, and they had one girl at this stage. Following his worldwide travels, Halpin returned to his hometown, living at Leitrim Lodge for a period of time before eventually settling outside the town at Tinnakilly, where he built a stately home. Robert Halpin was first and foremost a Wicklow man. Throughout his career, throughout all his voyages, he was always a Wicklow man. As he, after the cable voyages and everything else, he had more money than he would ever need. He could have built a house anywhere. Where did he build it? He wanted it built here in Wicklow and overlooking the sea. And of course, Tinnakilly House, uh, it's called after the townland that's in just on the edge of Wicklow, Tinnakilly. Tinnakilly House itself also reflects Halpin's maritime life and you can see some of the architectural features in it. The stairs particularly could easily have come from the Great Eastern, the layout and things like that, uh, the way it's compact but built around very maritime. Also some of the floor supports on the balcony up there, uh, the very same as ship's knees supporting a, a deck head. And, uh, so, and there's other features I'm sure around the house but they're the most obvious. When, he, when Halpin retired, he really devoted himself more and more to the social life of Wicklow, uh, of Wicklow Town and the county in general, but particularly Wicklow Town. He became chairman of the Harbour Board. He supported the regatta. In fact, was one of the founding members of the annual regatta that's still going on today, 130 years later. He died at the age of 57, when he had so much to offer the county and the town. And his life, uh, the way, the cause of his death is particularly uh, sad. It'd be, uh, he was shipwrecked twice by the time he was 22, the first time he was 15. He had all these adventures through his life. He was in, had close shaves in the American Civil War. And how did he die? He was clipping his toenails. He nipped the toe. Gangrene set in and he died of gangrene. So he actually died from clipping his toenails. The people of Wicklow town particularly are very proud of Halpin. Uh, shortly after his death they built the obelisk to him in, uh, in Fitzwilliam Square. But then his memory kind of died away. The problem with a monument is you pass it every day and uh, it sometimes falls out. But in the last 20 years his memory has come back and his, there's been articles about him in the local historical journal and in the last two years there's been a Halpin room opened in Wicklow Jail for visitors to come and have a look at and there's quite a few pieces of memorabilia there. Another thing to perpetuate his memory is there's a helping trail around the town to different places, going to different spots associated with his life, such as the Bridge Tavern where he was born and just other aspects and leading up to the jail as well and it's very, very, very good tour and it gives you a nice overview of Halpin's life. <laughs>